How are you, Mark? Hello, how are you? I am fine and dandy, thank you. How are you? Is that Mr. Rogers behind you? Yeah, it's Mr. Rogers <laughs> when there's Nancy Pelosi clapping. Uh, yeah. Not to geek out on you a little bit, um, I'm a huge fan of you and your work. Um, I This is not hyperbole. I watch Let's Be Bad probably like once a week. <laughs> well, thank you. I just, just watched it yesterday because, strangely enough, it is in Some Like It Hot, the musical <laughs> I'm in rehearsal for right now. Uh -huh. God. Uh -huh. Okay. Makes me even more excited that there is a Some Like It Hot musical, so that's wonderful. Um, and it's also in the Smash musical that we had uh -huh. a reading of half a year ago. Yeah. I so if we're, we're, if we're lucky enough for both shows to have a life mm -hmm. it'll be a bizarre world where uh, <laughs> let's be bad is in two broadway shows at the same time that's like like such a beautiful gay fever dream that i cannot ask for anything else gay multiverse it's oh like... my god ah! <laughs> great <laughs> um i love bros i've seen it three times um i'm a big big super fan i'm probably i already asked my friends like on a text chain earlier, I was like, we're going to see bros again. <laughs> we can just because I'm a huge fan of it. Um, and I think the music is great in it. And um, love is not love, which I do want to talk about is um, I feel like I had much more of an emotional reaction to that song than I actually anticipated. Um, but I guess the first question I wanted to ask you is what do you musically like about romantic comedies? What do I musically like? Oh, I don't know. Just in general. Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, that's a good question, but I don't know the answer. <laughs> um, you know, the fact that it's, uh, well, well, first of all, that there's no like chases or, or, or um, you know, people beating each other up or fighting. Um, I, I, you know, I've never really had to do those kind of cues. I, and the first, there's been one here or there, and the actually the biggest ones I've ever had to do were in Mary Poppins Returns, which, mm -hmm. even though it was Mary Poppins Returns, they were chases. Like when they, when the kids have the fan, the they go into the bowl, and, mm -hmm. and it, there was an animated chasing with the with the mean wolf and everything. I had to take it very seriously. It was five minutes of or more of intense chase music that uh -huh. I, was like, I was scared. Like, do I really know how to do this? And anyway, so I mean, I just like the kind of like easygoing nature, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. How I'm trying yeah. to answer. It has an easygoing nature that is that can be a pleasurable place to be in as you're working and writing, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was something about when I was you know, just thinking of, you know, the the broad sense of music or a score in uh, this genre of, of of films that I remember, like in '97, there was like at the Oscars there was they did like a dancing montage and for to like present the the scores that were nominated that year, and I was always drawn to like my best friend's wedding. I don't know if it was the dancing, I don't know if it was the music. So um, for some reason, when I was going to ask you that question um i was thinking to myself oh maybe i personally just love music from this type of movie more than a lot of other uh sport well it's usually you know it's usually it's friendly it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a more friendly kind of music so you know what's not to like that's true okay um i was curious if you intended to make the score of bros to sort of sound, I don't want to say quintessential New York. I don't know. There's, there's, I feel like when I was listening to the score separate from the film, I love how much piano is in it. Um, and it did give me a sense of time and place. And I was wondering if that was totally intentional. Well, that's nice that you felt that way. So thank you. And, and <laughs> that's, that's me on piano. That's the most, I've ever played piano on any movie score. And I've been writing movie scores since the beginning of time. But um, 
now that like it was so much was done right here in my well not right here in my studio i'm in a writer's room right now in a rehearsal hall but uh mm-hmm. you know uh, now that they have such good piano s- samples that when i play we were like why we record this it's like here it is so mm-hmm. that's it's all me so that was fun um you know i was writing it i was in new york you know what's on the screen is what gives birth to the music so I don't know that I intentionally thought of New York necessarily. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking of Bobby and Aaron. And you know, that first scene where they're walking down the street, that's kind of really, I mean, there's one or two fun cues before that when they're talking to each other, but uh, mm-hmm. online. Yeah. Uh, but the one walking down the street is where we established this kind of like, it's a gentle rocking with a touch of country in the way I'm playing the piano, which mm-hmm. matches Aaron. And it kind of softens Billy or Bobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it kind of lets you know a little that these two are already kind of connecting. Yeah. You know, that's the the hard thing with any film music is not going too far where you're saying, look, here, look. But you also, like, it can be helpful to, you know, so if you have two antagonistic people, but there's the music underneath them that softens and show that even with their back and forth Mm -hmm. so there's a connection i was gonna ask you about that track because i listened to that that cue a couple of times like back to back and there's such um there's like an ease to it um and there is the way that it does flow into that kind of uh i wrote down and this is not a right word for it but i wrote twangy down and it was sort of like the way that it goes in and out like that and I the way that it kind of colors the 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 characters in that situation I thought that was actually very very lovely so I love that thank you thank you very much because you 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 really perfectly described what we would have hoped or thought that that music was doing so thank you very much yeah it reminded me of like when you're like flirting with somebody or you're just starting to talk with somebody about how you know, how you can feel that, you know, like, this is going well, and you don't even sort of have to try. It's very effortless. It also, it has a circular quality. Mm-hmm. It just keeps, it's like a, it's like waves. Mm-hmm. So it, that's sort of like a conversation. It was just this, I mean, I wrote it without actually looking at it. I mean, I just wrote a couple of ideas and themes and textures to present to Nick, the director. Mm-hmm. And that was one that just kind of came to me as I was just sitting there playing the piano, not knowing. I wonder what this is like up against this scene or how mm-hmm. this might work for the rest of the movie. But and then we put the different things I presented to him up against scenes and that one just kind of like hmm. suction like. <laughs> No, I'm gonna hear that noise every time I and every time I, listen. I had I had PT this morning on my knee and the PT uh-huh. used a sink plunger on my kneecap. Like an actual plunger you can get from Yes, he had to put like ambionic fluid or what's not ambionic fluid. <laughs> whatever the, the fluid that they use to, you know, use um ultrasound. Uh mm. that, that squishy uh yes. <laughs> so, oh I know that has nothing to do with film scoring, but well. <laughs> I love that. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me when you have a character like Bobby, who is very cynical. I mean, people talk about in the movie about how um, kind of abrasive he is. Um, he always sort of lives up here. Um, and when you sort of have a genre like this, is it? Do you ever sort of worry? maybe with with this particular film, like how the music is going to sort of um, complement a character like that, just because I feel like I haven't seen um, a character like him, uh, which is a character that I personally really connect with. Maybe that's why I love the movie so much, um, because I feel like I'm always at a curmudgeon 11 at all times. Um, is that ever like a worry to you if you're 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 scoring a love story for a character like this who isn't who's sort of over it the whole time at one point i know judd apatow had said like should there be a sound for bobby's character that is kind <laughs> of like, that is 
a little more, you know, edgy. I hate to use that word. It's such a cliche, but, mm -hmm. but that would describe the sound, mm -hmm. but it never really happened that way. And, and, and in many of the scenes that that maybe could have happened, there already is like club music playing. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the scenes I called for film score were ones where you wouldn't want to accentuate that. And like, as you're saying, I mean, that's, or, and as I said earlier, that's something good that the music can do. It's like someone is maybe being edgy on top of it, but the music mm -hmm. is, is kind of giving you a warm hug at yeah. the same time. You know, just letting you know, you know, the heart that's beating in there besides the, you know, the curmudgeon at 11 yeah. person. <laughs> And I can relate, believe you me. That's why I also love Billy Eichner. I mean, when I first yeah. saw Billy on the street, I was like, oh my God, this is the yeah. greatest ever. <laughs> and then I met him at something and I just went on and on and on. So he actually called me and asked me to write the theme to mm. Billy on the street. He was also working with people I'd worked with at Funny or Die. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. I was right in the middle of like 3,000 things and I would have held him up. And it will always be a great heartbreak that I didn't do it. The guy who did it, did it great. I love that theme. Mm -hmm. It's making dreams come true. <laughs> on the street, 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 street. <laughs> there is a, the first time I saw Billy Eichner, just, just screaming at people on the street. There's, there's an episode of that where um, he runs up to a girl who he just is demanding that she name a woman can't do it so it, it is like the funniest thing i've ever seen so i'll just yell name a woman randomly out and then... <laughs> um i did actually also just want to ask you in a general sense this is probably a cliche question but I, I don't know this movie is talked about how groundbreaking it is how special it is and i just wanted to know like from you what seeing a film like this means to you i mean you've scored you know, a million and a half movies. Um, and I feel, and I felt this feeling when I was listening to Love Is Not Love, which I do want to ask about next, um, because it, it is very special. So um, you as a, a gay man, I just wanted to know what that means to you. It meant the world, of course, you know, I, I relate to any movie that I've scored, you mm -hmm. know, human and there are, those are humans up on the screen, but, to have this kind of specificity, is that the right word? Specificity, mm -hmm. yeah, was wonderful. I mean, it was just incredible to hear characters saying things that you don't get to hear in other movies and relating yeah. to each other. And, and there are characters in this movie that I don't even have in my own life who are specifically like that. Or, I, or maybe I have and just haven't recently, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's just wonderful. And uh, well, I was going to say something sad, but uh, well, you know, uh, the fact that the movie is struggling, there are a lot of reasons for it, I understand. And, and, and but I did feel sad that morning learning that because amongst many of the reasons you could imagine why I also did realize it's like, oh, yeah, people, you know, they don't, they don't want to see people like me, hmm. you know, uh, that I actually used the word to a friend nauseating. I, I was, I was nauseous with the yeah. feeling that, cause I live in a bubble. Yeah. I live in New York and theater show business and I just live in this bubble. And then, so the part of, for whatever reason, the box office is struggling, it really did hate me. Gut gut punch. I I agree. I saw I've seen the first time I watched it, it was when I was preparing to interview Nick and I watched a screener at home and I loved it. And then I the third time I saw it, I saw it at the world premiere at TIFF. And I was like at the very tippy top of the theater, like gorgeous Princess of Wales Theater in downtown Toronto. It was packed with people and it was the reaction that that movie got. It sounds so cheesy, but it, it really sort of warmed my heart that this kind of movie got such a huge reaction. I've been joking with a lot of people that 
throughout Toronto when I was there for the first weekend of TIFF that there were guys, straight, seemingly straight guys, running around that anytime they heard that a friend was waiting to see bros, they all just started chanting, bros, bros, bros. And I was like, this movie is going to be really big. And I was so excited. So I, I, I share your disappointment. I'm hoping that you know, the great reviews and the good cinema score is going to like make it have some legs um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, maybe that's not- And it lives forever. You know, that's the good thing. Yeah, yeah. It lives forever and people will discover it and know what's, what's there. But yeah, when I heard the word from Toronto, I, I was busy working. I couldn't go mm -hmm. up there, but I was like, holy shit yeah wow. i mean it was beyond your wildest dreams it seems like with the reaction it was getting yeah uh, was i crazy. wish i could have been there yeah it was crazy um i want to talk about love is not love because i <laughs> had such an emotional response to it and the thing that i think is so impressive about it is the fact that it can be sort of an homage to country music it's cheeky with the lyrics um you know mentioning mariah carey remixes i actually just listened to it again today and i just like typed up the lyrics and the way that this song is both sneaky and heartfelt sneaky in the way that it you know the the i feel like the heart really sneaks up on you for a lack of a better phrase um, and it is so special. And I was curious what kind of pressure you felt to deliver a song with Billy that it delivers on multiple levels, especially for me. So, um, yeah, just sort of talk to me about like the, the creation of that. because I think it's a really special song. I'm so glad you feel that way. And I will relay all that to Billy because I have to really tell you the truth is that, you know, he came in. It was his idea to turn this moment into a song. Mm hmm. And he came in with all the lyrics oh, wow. and and the basic idea of the melody. Mm -hmm. And I came in more as like the Mr. Music Man and put the chords and helped them form mm -hmm. the melodies and, and was part of writing the song. But the lyrics, you know, and I love writing lyrics, by the way. I mean, mm -hmm. I do write lyrics for everything and that I work on. So that was kind of odd for me. I, I don't I couldn't remember the last time. Well, actually the last time was a wink and a smile from Sleepless in Seattle, ironically. Oh, wow, really? That's, I think, the last wow. time I, I worked on a, anything that I didn't co-write the lyrics for it. So it was wow. it was an interesting new thing to go back into, like, oh, I'm just setting lyrics to music. Mm -hmm. And even there, Billy had a very firm idea of, like, you know, where the melody would be going. Um, I like to say, like I said about my work with Trey Parker on the South Park movie, I was like Igor to their Dr. Frankenstein. I mean, I, I was in there. I was sewing the body together. Uh -huh. I was setting up the lightning bolts. But, but you know, Love is Not Love is Billy's baby. I just helped deliver it. How many more metaphors can I, you know, <laughs> he came, he came into, into the room with, it was already crowning. And I, I just, um, you know, but that that's him. I mean, that's that's Billy and his talent and, and his understanding of the movie and what that character needed to do, because it used to be just the speech he gave. Mm -hmm. And he he just thought there needed to be more of a grand gesture uh, yeah. of how he was going to come to Aaron's character and show mm -hmm. and Aaron a, a kind of show his love and, and his his understanding what Aaron liked musically. Yeah. So that's the best thing he could do is like, well, let me try to write a song that's like the kind of song that Aaron likes. And and the, the how the fact that the lyrics are like, as you said, cheeky and go back and forth. I mean, the that's just part, that's Billy. I mean, you know, no matter how serious you get, you, we all like to laugh. And that's a very gay thing too. Yeah. Of always <laughs> finding a way to laugh at things and seeing what's funny about it. That's a, a kind of part of, of the modern world that I miss is is being able to laugh at just about everything. Now it's very clear what you're not allowed to laugh at. Mm -hmm. We're all following those guidelines and we're learning. But still, I wish the lines were, were dotted instead of, you know, right. so hard, you know? Yeah. And the thing I think is so perfect about the song is, you know, I feel like there's a through line to the movie about how gay men don't listen to country music. 
and then the the melody is so um perfectly in line with a, a genre of music that is so open-hearted um and so i don't know i, I just it, it's just i think that's a magical moment in the movie just because it is so unexpected and romantic comedies have the big gesture usually it's like a chase through an airport and this is so much better than a chase through an airport well, we did do the, you know, there is, there was that traditional romantic comedy run, mm -hmm. tell someone you love them, you know, where Aaron does run. So there was like, like, I think 16 bars worth of right the romantic mm -hmm. run. I mean, I've done it when Aaron met Sally, I've done Sleep in Seattle. These were movies that had some classic running, uh, like mm -hmm. I've come to my senses. I know what I need. and want. <laughs> So it did have that too. I mean, so we were lucky to have our cake and eat it too. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'll send you, if you send me your email address, I know I have right. here a, a moment at the recording studio, where just, the, just the string section playing for the song. So you don't hear the song. All you hear is us in, this, in the recording studio mm. with strings, okay. which you know, are mixed into the song now. But it, it, I think you'll appreciate hearing just that, because that adds yeah. so much of the heart and romance to it, even though it's not in your face. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you don't, I think you find that interesting. Yeah, I'll hit you up on Twitter. I'll send you a DM. Yeah, do. Okay. Um, I guess one last question before I let you go. I know you're working on some like it hot. Um, obviously, don't want to like spoil anything or give anything uh, away. But I guess with a movie that is so beloved. Um, you know, Marilyn Monroe is having another big moment right now, but I was wondering if you could tell me what you are most excited for us to see with this like brand new musical. Well, first of all, the cast. I mean, I'm literally sitting through run throughs right now and the cast is so good. Yeah. And, and we have, I, I'm going to pat ourselves on the back. We have given them lots of great numbers to i mean the second act it's good to feel i mean oh I, i'm gonna curse it i'm not gonna say anything I, i'll okay. say this uh, i really hope people will like what i what we are trying to do which is please both people who love the movie and people who maybe could almost hate the movie for for the things that are no longer uh politically correct um about oh, it we okay. have really worked hard on keeping what we can and adding more texture to it and looking further into it for instance in the movie jack lemon really enjoys being a woman mm -hmm. and when osgood proposes to him he's he's over the moon <laughs> and then and then it's all for laughs yeah in our show we go a step further mm. and it's not just for laughs it's about recognizing something and uh, a discovery and and it's very uh, emotional and triumphant and and you know so i hope i think you're gonna like it <laughs> yeah yeah, we're um my husband and I are trying to figure out when we can come back to New York because we want to do like another it's been so long since we've had like a trip where we see like more than one show. So right. we're trying to figure out how what we can do. So that that's definitely definitely like on our list. And I will say that um as sort of a, a side note as an appreciation of your work, triumphant I think is a very good word for um like why I and I think a lot of audiences really connect with your music. Um, there was a very triumphant quality, a very, uh, it's very lovely. There's something about um, your scores that really hit on multiple levels. Again, not to be cheesy, but like they hit here and they hit here. And I feel cheesy. I love cheesy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, I don't know. I feel like there's a pull, like a sort of like you, you, your music sort of pulls us from right here. It's very. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad I. Had this appointment <laughs> with you. Thank you. You know, uh, it's very nice to hear that. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for letting me gush at you for 20 minutes. Uh, gush away. Thank you, Joey. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, break a leg more in your rehearsals in the opening, and um, I'm going to go see Burroughs like 10 more times. <laughs>
please do. Yeah, bring, I will. All right. bring friends with you. I will. I totally will. All right. Have a good day. Stay safe. Thank you, Joey. Bye.